right, again, we're going to jump into Chapter 7. We're going to go through this ideally in about an hour or so. Uh, just so you know, for the rest of the semester, in an ideal world, all right, in an ideal world, whatever you're doing for that other application that you're working on, all right, you'll be able to implement some of the stuff that's in the book here. Do I expect everything? No. Detect when the user touches the screen, moves a finger. That, depending on what you were trying to do, that may not be at all something that you'd want to put into an app. All right? Because some of the stuff, especially in this chapter, is more geared towards if you were drawing. All right? And if you're not going to offer drawing on yours, then probably most of the stuff wouldn't be that important. Okay? They're going to talk, as it says in here, about sensor manager in here. One thing that you are able to do in here is you can, um, literally, you can shake the device, okay? And use an atomic Boolean object to allow multiple threads to access a Boolean value in a thread-safe manner. What the heck does that mean? That means that you can have multiple things going on in your application at the same time that may be related or maybe even only just semi-related and they can access the same data and it won't be it won't be that if, if one person accesses the data the next person comes in and it breaks the app or whatever all right there's drawing in here so what literally you are allowed to do is to draw things and when you get done it draws each line into a bitmap and it allows you if you want to to save the completed project there's a menu in here, and it uses Android's 4.4 immersive mode. See this right here? And it might not sound like a big thing, but it says use, use Android's 4.4 immersive mode to enable the user to draw on the entire screen. So in other words, you can have the status bar on the top and whatever you have on the bottom can disappear while you're drawing. And the reason I'm bringing it up is notice it says 4.4. That means you can't use it in 4.3 and below. Right, it'll only work in 4.4. All right, and they talk about some print helper stuff in here, too. So again, this is the app. You go, well, that's the app? Well, I brought it up in here. All right, this is the Doodles app. All right. So notice, if you take a look up on the screen right now, you'll notice in here, this is a label, and... If I start bringing in some red, you can see what happens here. So if I go all the way over, of course, I'm going to have a red. You know, that's going to give my color red. All right? So if I start playing around, again, it's pretty obvious what's happening here. The alpha is the opacity. By default, it's got an opacity of 1. If I put it like this, then it's semi-transparent. If I put it like that, it's totally hidden. All right? So you can set this stuff up, and then based on what you want to do, you can draw. So in the example here, this is black and white, of course, but what they did was they had the, the flower, I think, was yellow, the stem was green, the grass was green, a different color green, etc. So the idea is that you can come in here and play around with it using that. And they talk quite a bit about that and what you have to do. Bless you. In some ways, not really, but in some ways, this even kind of acts like an Etch-a-Sketch. Because as the author says, you can turn your finger into an eraser, you can clear the screen, and you can shake the device to clear the entire drawing from the screen. Is that the best way of doing it? I'm not saying it is or it isn't, but it's something that you are able to do if you want to. So notice, I showed you the color stuff. There's also a line width. Works pretty much the same way as far as how thick you want the line to be. And if you notice on here, notice it says choose color and choose line width from the Doodles app. Notice there's several things that you can choose from the menu. Eraser to do just that. And by default, what the eraser does is it assumes you have a white background. And what it does is it basically it turns the color of your writing palette instrument to white. So whatever you put there, you're overriding what had been there. So if you only want to erase part of it, you can clear the whole thing, you can save it, and you can print it. All right? Now, one thing I like about this book, and, and I, I know I've asked you this before, I'm going to ask you to do it again. Again, remember, we have, after this week, we have six weeks. Okay? 
So when it's six weeks from now, that, that week, I, as I did a few weeks ago, you're going to be doing um, course evaluations. I like to hear, you know, Jeff, I thought these di this Ditel book was really good. Jeff, I thought this Ditel book really stunk. I like to hear stuff like that because then the next time books get ordered, it's good to know what the class thought of the book. All right. One thing I like about this book is that every chapter, virtually every chapter here has an app, a complete app, and they have exercises at the end of the chapter. That's one of the things in a book like this that I look for, to be honest with you. All right. That Swift book that we're using, the, the PDF that we're, we're working from online, you probably have noticed that there's, there's virtually a project, in there, at least one, in every chapter. They don't have assignments at the end, but they have, the, they have that. All right. And the other thing I like what he does is he's constantly uh, puts references in here to the developer.android.com site. All right. As he says, most devices have an accelerometer. Um, that allows apps to detect movement, and that's what he'll talk about a little bit in here. Okay. Now, one thing that you may understand, you may not understand, but he's talked about a lot in this book, especially in the last couple chapters, have been these fragments. All right, And again, a fragment can be an entire program, or you can break a program up into a series of fragments. So as he says, there are several previous apps used alert dialogues in dialog fragments to display to the user or to ask questions. The ones we've done so far, as it says, were created using anonymous inner classes. And this app will define three subclasses of dialog fragment. You can read these yourselves. All right. But whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, another thing I like about this book is Ditels is very deliberate in their style. They typically show you how to do something and then later on in the book, they'll say, there are other ways of doing it, so let's just research another way. But I don't think, at least, I don't think they try to shove it down your throat. It says, preventing multiple dialogues from appearing at the same time. It's possible that the event handler for the shake event could try to display the information dialogue for erasing the image while the dia another dialogue is already on the screen. So the idea is the system doesn't want to put itself into a confused state. When you're doing one thing, like maybe you're in the middle of saving and you've got a dialogue up for saving and now you start shaking the, the uh, you start shaking your device. Well, the system doesn't know, geez, should I, should I stop saving and should I ask you if you want to clear the screen or whatever. So what it does is it says it's only going to allow you to do one of these operations at a time. Notice the app draws lines onto bitmaps. It says you can associate a canvas with a bitmap. What's, I'm asking you, what's one thing about using bitmaps? All right, what's, let's, what's one thing about like a .bmp file as opposed to a .png or, or a, you know, a .gif or whatever? Well, they're smaller in size, that's one thing, but the quality isn't as good. Bitmap files, by and large, you can open them up and paint, and that's kind of what it looks like you drew them in. And in, a, in a way, that's what he's doing in this chapter, is he's coming up with his own Android paint program to do this. All right. So notice you can drag one or more fingers across the screen to draw. The app stores the information for each finger as a path object. So it has to be able to, dis to distinguish and delineate between you know, a single finger and double finger, I think it goes up to three on here. All right. The immersive mode I mentioned to you already. Notice it says here, I'm, I'm on page 219, the app uses a gesture detector to hide or show the device's bars or the action bar. So again, the idea is when you're drawing, it wants to give you as much of the canvas as possible, so it's going to go and hide the status bar. Saving the stuff to the, uh, as it says there, if you want to save it to the devices gallery, it says on the bottom of page 219, as it says, there is a save option, and yeah, it, as it says, it'll save it to the gallery. All right. The media store manages media files that are stored on the device. Okay. Starting with Android 4.4, there's a printing framework, so you can print this out also. He shows this on the tape that he had for, for, for it, and I will tell you that 
when he goes to print out the stuff, the, the stuff that he, you print out, it looks very crude. He creates this flower thing. It looks a lot cruder when you actually print it out than it does on the screen here, at least in my opinion. <clears throat> All right, so he says create the project. Again, notice uh, you know, he's, the minimum required is 4.3. So in the past, we've gone down a bit further than that with some of the ones that we've worked on. Okay, And I want to show you something, too. This isn't a big thing, but I want you to see this. I have no idea with what I'm about to tell you if it's always been like this or not, but with this doodles file, when I brought it up, all right, when I brought it up, it was I got the red X, meaning it wasn't going to work. Well, you just saw it that it worked. So I looked at the error message, and it told me that I didn't have these two files, the class path and the project files, and that's, there's the projects, the class path, rather, and there's the project file. Those are two files that are created for you automatically by the system. And I'm like, geez, you know, I just brought them in from Ditel. So I'm not going to lie. I opened up the BMI program, and I took those two and copied them over. And at least so far, it appears to work. All right? But I'd copied things over be before from Ditel, and I'd never had a problem with it before. All right? But this is the, probably one of the more advanced apps that are in, the, that are in here. All right. So the strings file, you can see this on pages 221 and 222. I guess it's all on 221. All right. The dimensions file is very small, as you can see on the bottom of page 221. And then he talks about how to build the menu. Uh, how to build how to build the menu. All right. Now notice here menus for different Android versions. And he says uh, 19 is the version that corresponds to Android 4.4. Android will choose the menu device. So if you have a V19 or higher, and we, do, we are running higher than that, but then he mentions that you can also set it up for Android 4.3 and earlier versions. And the thing is, if you do that and you run it on, remember we're running a, an emulator here, but if you run an emulator, and you, you, you set it up so that it's working with an earlier version of Android, the menu will look much cruder than it will, all right, on 4.4 and above. So he tells you how to build them both, all right? All right. If you notice in here, it says the activity main layout for this app contains only the doodle fragment to add this fragment. So if we look in here, I don't know about you, but in my opinion, at least, that activity main file that you see on your screen right that's very small. All right? It's because it's pretty plain. I mean, look at it that you're creating the equivalent of a paint program. This is setting up the easel for you. That's really it. That's all that you have on here. All right? So if we go and look at it in the graphical mode, that's all that's there is just that doodle fragment. There's not really much in the thing. So although there is a lot of code in here, and I think there's like five different classes that they use, the GUI itself, there's not much to it. All right. So I don't want to sit there and read to you what's going on in this one and what's going on in that one. I did watch the tape twice, read the chapter a couple times. I have at least a general understanding of what's going on in here. really go into a lot of detail here, starting on around 223, 224, and 225, 226, as far as building the GUI and all the different stuff that you're going to have in there. All right. It's interesting. I don't know if I told you this. I'm just going to mention it now. In the Java class, 
I'm using a different, it, it's still a Gaddis book, but it's a different, he's got two or three different Java ones. And, and I actually ordered the, the one that I didn't think I ordered. Don't ask me why, but I ordered a different one. So in, in, uh, in the Java class, we're going to get through chapter eight of about a 15 chapter book. And we're going to be done, we just finished seven. So next week's lab, and then we're going to go into eight the next week and have a lab. So we'll have three weeks left. And what I'm going to attempt to do with the class in the last three weeks is we're going to get into Android and attempt to build that tip calculator. So I think that's going to be interesting because they don't have near the sophistication that you guys have because by the time you had done that, you had a full semester in and you had really half of another semester. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works. Hopefully it'll be fine. So he goes page after page after page on building these different things. And finally, we get up to page 228. And on 228, he starts talking about the code. Okay, So we'll talk a little bit about some of the stuff that's in here. Like I said, it's 123. We'll be done no later than 2 o'clock, and it'll probably be before then. All right. We will spend a little bit more time. Chapter 8 in the program in here, chapter 8 is on, he literally has you create a contact form. Type, it's an address book type of thing. And we're going to end up doing that either next Tuesday or the following Tuesday in the swing class. Swift class, not swing, Swift class. So we're going to either do that Tuesday the 7th or Tuesday the 14th. We're going to build something similar to that in Swift. All right. So as it says, the app consists of six classes. We've got our main activity. Notice there's a doodle fragment class, and it handles both the view and that accelerometer, so again, the, the ability to shake this, to, to um, ask if you want to clear the drawing. The doodle view for drawing, saving, and print capabilities. The color fragment, you've already kind of seen that, or at least some of it. The line fragment, you saw a picture of that. And the erase dialog fragment. What he does, what these guys do, and much, they have a much better understanding of this than I do, is they do a good job of not only modularizing their code, but they do a good job of modularizing their classes. So ideally, the class will be doing only one thing. I think you do a pretty good job of doing that. So as it says here, this Doodle fragment displays the Doodle view. It manages the menu options. And it manages when you do that shake to erase type of thing. But then what he does for all these is you know, he comes in here and he says, well, the new stuff is what's in gray right there. Again, Brad's in here, and he can tell you that I, I've been telling the students that in the Java class, you know, if you remember this from Java 1, we only import maybe, you know, one, two, or three packages in Java, you know, like for decimal formatting and whatever, all right? But when you get into here, this isn't even a lot. You've seen, you've seen apps that we've done where they've had almost a page of things that they're importing. Because of the way that this is broken up, You'll notice that all the stuff that's under here, so remember, you can't just say hardware.star, but you, have, you should bring in just what you want to bring in. All right? Okay. Again, I'm just going to try to hit on some of the stuff that at least I think is kind of new. So if you see here, this is near the top of page 235. The author says, Accelerometer listening should be enabled only when the doodle fragment is on the screen. All right. So again, once, once you basically have the screen up and you're able to start drawing on it, you want to make the accelerometer available so that as soon as you start drawing things, if you want to, you can shake it to, to clear it, erase it, whatever you want to say. already mentioned this, the user can shake the device even when dialogues are already displayed on the screen. But the system wants, must make sure that if you're in the middle of doing something and you start to shake it, that it allows you the opportunity to end whatever it is you're doing, printing or saving or whatever. And that's what they talk about here. All right. You'll notice, and I think this is kind of what turns some people off about doing iOS types of stuff. I, I shouldn't say iOS, of doing 
app type of stuff like this is a lot of the stuff that you work with, depending on how meticulous you want to get, as it says right here, can involve hardware. And people hear that and they're just put off. And yeah, it can involve hardware, hardware but how are you making the hardware do something? By using software. We have our um, advisory committee meeting two weeks from tonight. And uh, I invited Doug. He's not sure if he's going to come or not. But um, it's funny because he loves to sit there at those advice. And he did this when he was an instructor here, too. But he loves to sit there and say, you know, it's not that hardware isn't important because, of course, it's important. But it's the software that runs everything, even the hardware, because the hardware is nothing without the software. And I've, I've made the, the uh, analogy, and you may or may not like it, but the hardware is like the body. But the software is the brain. All right, you can have somebody who is unbelievably physically fit, but if they, if they have Alzheimer's, as an example, all right, my wife's uncle, guy was in great shape, but he got Alzheimer's. The, watching him the last six years of his life was just really, really sad. I guess if I'd rather have my body go to hell or my mind, I'd rather keep my mind. Maybe that's why I'm just getting fat now, but my mind seems to be pretty active. I don't know. All right. And you can see the stuff that they're doing here, kind of important here on, on this switch statement that's on page 235. All right. Do you want to be able to change the color? Do you want to be able to change the line width? Do you want to be able to erase what you have on the screen? All right. Do you want to clear first before you erase? Do you want to save it? Do you want to print it? It's pretty obvious, and you can see the different routines that you're calling based on those. He explains those afterwards much better than I ever could. Next, starting on 235, he goes through this Doodle View class. 236, sorry. And as he says, that processes the user's touch, and it draws the corresponding lines. Now, I don't know about you, but and I know well, Travis, I guess, left. But uh, it's always fun to pick on him when I, when I can talk about, about the Swift stuff. But one of the things that kind of bugs me about the Mac stuff is sometimes they'll say, you know, the right mouse click. Well, when you don't have a mouse, you're doing it with your fingers, right? And I'll do exactly what they say, and I'll, I'll be hitting it like this, and nothing's happening. And then I'll be like, geez, and I'll like do that and hit my, and then it'll work. And that, I don't know about you, but I think that stuff can be frustrating as heck going through that. Because you're used to doing things a certain way with Windows, and they're done, so at least some of it's done a little bit differently. And the fact that we don't have a mouse. Now, when you look at this, does that look at all familiar to you? I don't know if you remember that from last semester, but we started talking about array lists. If you remember with an array list, it had that weird looking kind of syntax where you put stuff in angle brackets. Because they're getting into the same stuff here. I've, I've been doing so much reading lately about whether or not you should learn Objective C first and then learn Swift. Or you should learn Swift and then just learn Objective-C as you're using Swift. And I've really come to the realization that if you don't learn Objective-C first, I think at least when you get to a sophisticated level of being a Swift programmer, you're going to have problems. You're going to learn it whether you want to or not. going through here just to see what I've marked up in my book. Not a whole lot in here. Oops. All right. And there's, I don't even know how much more there is to say, but again, I don't know what you're doing for your special apps in here, your, your one app that you're going to be working on for the rest of the semester. If you're not if you're not doing something that's going to involve drawing, there's probably very little in this particular chapter that you're going to need to use. When we get to the next chapter and we go through that address book, you're going to see where you've got the ability to, to bring up different screens. I would think, or and hope I should say, that whatever app you're going to create will have some level of sophistication to it. All right. And again, the difference between 
the app that I'm asking you to create on your own and all the other stuff, you know, I listening to, to Teresa and, and Mark this morning, Mark said that he basically just kind of brought in the Ditel stuff and then made changes for for the app that he did. He did an NFL one instead of a state, you know, the state capitals or whatever the heck it is you guys are doing. You did that one too? Okay. All right. But Teresa wanted to do that, but she didn't want everything. And sometimes it was very hard to figure out what to bring in, what to leave out. And if you left something out, it's like, well, geez, now what, I do, what do I do with this method? And there is no magical way of doing it. All right. One of the books that, and I'm just going to show you this. I'm not trying to get, get off on a tangent here, but I want to show you this. And I think I think we can get it from here. I'm, I'm going to check. This is a book I've always thought of using for this class, but I never have. I don't know. Yep, they do have it for free. And I'll, I'll uh, I'm wondering if somebody's tried to shut this site down because it's been unavailable the last two weeks when I've tried to come out here. You know, they've got free books. But I don't know if you've ever heard this book of this book. It's called Hello Android. It's written in a very simplistic manner. What you do throughout the entire book, you build a Sudoku. Is that, am I pronouncing that right? You build that game, and that's the whole, the whole book, is you build that. But it starts out really, really simple, and it gets more and more advanced, and allows you to bring in advanced puzzles and all sorts of other stuff. But it's kind of cool, but I didn't know if people would like a book that had one project throughout the entire book, or they'd hate it, because if you you know if you come in here, if Laura comes in the first day and says, you know, I hate Sudoku, well, guess what? You're probably not going to really like this book a whole heck of a lot then. All right, but it is out there. It's it's actually gotten some. I'll just show you this real quick. I mean, when you get up to 84 people and you, and you look at that, it's been reviewed pretty well. It's not a particularly long book. It's not, it doesn't have near, near the stuff in here that this book has. I mean, this book that I, that, that I picked out, and I picked it out for this class, so if you don't like it, it's all on me. But this book, it goes into all sorts of stuff. I think there's about, I was going to say about 300 pages, something like that. So it's a lot, it's a lot smaller than the book that we have right now. Right. But it's one the next time that took classes taught, you know, and people say, well, are you going to use that next time? I don't know what the hell I'm teaching next semester. So I can't tell you that. You know what I'm saying? It's, they, they've been telling me that they're going to they're gonna look at schedules again and they might move people around and have them teach different things. So nobody lets me know anyway. Color fragment, as it says, it's used to create an alert for setting the drawing color. So they explain everything that I just showed you. That's all done in here. The alpha, the red, the green, and the blue. Not really a whole heck of a lot of code to do that. All right. Then next on the bottom, starting on the bottom of page 251, the same kind of thing, but they explain it to you using the line fragment. All right on the bottom of the page here. And there's not much more in the chapter here. All right, so I'm just going to go jump up to the end of the chapter that's on 256 here. So this is the summary. And I'm not going to read a bit of it to you. But again, look through the chapter. If there's something you can use in the app you're working on, great. All right, Zach, you weren't here this morning, so I'll give you one of these. Now, again, last thing is in the next chapter, starts on around page 260. Yep. It's the address book. All right. So what we build in that one, it's the most sophisticated app in the entire thing. So when you look at this, you've got one screen here that's got a list of your names. 
when you touch on any one of the names, it brings up another screen that's got their personal information. And it allows you to add people to your address book, remove them, and update them. And what's cool about this is to do this, it, it has permanent storage. So it brings in yet another relational database management system that's called SQLite. All right. So that's what we'll get to next time. Questions? Comments? Caleb's here. All right. Okay, that's all that I had then.